It's Professor Margaret Kobia, and she's here to tell us what role has the government played in making sure that the women's agenda is promoted in our country and the playing ground has been leveled to make sure that women are actually allowed to take up leadership positions and, and anything that they want to achieve in the society. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining me so far. And uh, we are also expecting one more guest this morning. Her name is Honorable Eve Obara, the Member of Parliament for Kasipul Kabondo. And when she arrives, she will also share with us and add her insights on the journey of women empowerment in Kenya. Thank you so much, both of you, first of all, for joining me. And you. uh, yeah, you're welcome. There is something great happening in our country, and it's, it's, it's a wave and a new wake for women. Uh, spaces are opening up, like you were sharing with me, Mama Phoebe, a CEO earlier. And things are beginning to get better for the woman of today to thrive and to get to her dreams and get to her goals. And I want us to begin by explaining more about this program, Trailblazer program. It's actually one of the things that I find very important because for a very long time, women have been having that thirst of looking at the stories of the past. So you're telling us to thrive. You're telling us that we can do it. What have other women of the past achieved? Where are they? What are those stories that we can be able to learn from? And I think this answers that question. So tell me a bit about Trailblazer. I'll start with you, uh, mm. Professor. Mm. Tell me a bit about this program. Why is it important? And what are some of the objectives that we are looking at when we are talking about Trailblazers? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Let me say that uh, the government has found it, of course, um, very important to have a ministry mm -hmm. in the government that is responsible for gender equality and women empowerment. Mm -hmm. Let me also say that uh, gender equality and women empowerment is a global agenda. That's why you see in um, sustainable development goals in goal number, number five. And when you look also in Kenya, of course, in the constitution, the supreme role and gender equality and women empowerment is at the center. And that's why there are many laws that guide how women empowerment is supposed to be carried on. And also if you look at the agenda 2063 in African AU, mm -hmm. women issues are also at the center stage. Therefore, what we can say in Kenya, the government has really put a lot of importance on creating that environment mm -hmm. where women can be seen to play a significant role in the socioeconomic development of this country. So as a ministry responsible for gender affairs, mm -hmm. what we have done is uh, we have a program, what we call Trail Bracers. Yeah. This Trail Bracers looks at women who have worked uh, extremely hard and broken new ground since independence, uh, trying to create space and to encourage women to, to take positions of leadership. Mm -hmm. Not just for the sake of taking position of leadership, for as a way of making sure that uh, women are recognized and play a critical role in, in the, the growth of the country. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the program of Trailblazers has brought together all women who have made significant contribution politically, uh, economically in this country, and we are trying to recognize them because I'm sure when these women uh, became trailblazers, mm -hmm. they were just trying to find a space in leadership, in uh, making a contribution in development of this country. And therefore, they might not even have thought in themselves they were trailblazers. Mm. Yeah, they but they went an they extra are. mile to yeah. do whatever they were doing. If they were teachers, if they were doctors, if they are politicians, they have gone an extra mile to show that it can be done by women. Mm. And I think that's why I'm saying as developing in this country, what a man can do, women can, can do, do better. better. Yeah. Therefore, the trail brings us is to, to us, is gives us a, a very good um, role model because I believe uh, all women, one day they must identify who they want to be when they grow up. Mm. And in that, trail brings us provides a role model a role model that can show that even if I'm trying to become a chief executive of a parastato or any organization, yes. what steps should I take? And I'm sure what trailblazers have given us, they have given us kind of a pathway. If you want to become a leader, what should you do as a woman? Mm -hmm. Because we know generally in Kenya and globally, 
women have faced difficulties in finding a place uh, in a decision making at the highest table. Yeah. They have to get there. These trailblazers who have sat in that table, we want to celebrate them, we want to recognize them, we want to reward them. And I think I want to thank Mama CEO uh, Phoebe here today because she is launching a book mm -hmm. telling how she has been able to make a contribution in this country as a teacher, as a public servant, mm -hmm. as a member of parliament. So having written the book and having given us an opportunity to bring other trail breezers, I think Together. it makes a great statement. And I think it's very important all other women who are aspiring to find a space to become leaders in this country actually watch the, 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 the event so that they can be able to pick some lessons that it can be done and, it is and they can play it is possible. Like, yeah. And the, in this country, there's no better time than before where women now have support and right from the government, from Ms. Excellence, the President, the Deputy President, everybody is participating to one, supporting and empowering women to gain greater heights in decision making. All right, thank mm -hmm. you so much for that. And now, you know, among the trailblazers mm -hmm. we're celebrating at such a time mm -hmm. is Mama Phoebe CEO. And uh, many <coughs> know you as among the women who pioneered um, politics in this country at a time when it was so daring for a woman to come and vie for any political seat in 1979. That's when you ventured into politics. Many know you as um, among the women members of parliament who were longest serving and among the very few women at that time who were serving in that uh, kind of a position. But before that happened, you were still a force to reckon with. And I want, to, I want you to tell us a bit about who Phoebe CEO was before politics. What are some of the things that were happening that led, you know, like every, every step led you to a different world altogether. Tell us a bit about Phoebe before she got into politics. Well, I, I was born in a, in a village somewhere near Lake Victoria. Yes. And I grew up like any other girl in the village. But then I was able to go to school because my father was a, a missionary. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a school where we, we, we lived. So it was possible for me to have some education. Although I'd, in those days, there were two subjects that they did not teach the girls. Those two subjects were for breadwinners, the men. Mm. So they didn't teach us English. They did not teach us mathematics. Oh, so you could they, go to school, they argued, but... Yeah, they argued oh, okay. that we did not need those two subjects. So when the boys went in for mathematics or English, we were sent to, to the farm to, to do some agricultural work. Because oh, okay. women, after all, mm -hmm. were farmers mm -hmm. and, and then they were, you know, housekeepers, mm -hmm. as, as it were. But then I was able to, to go to school and and also leave my province to come to central Kenya and uh, have a teacher training uh, uh, college mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. Went back home to teach. I, ta I taught at Pomwani School mm -hmm. during the time when Kerry Francis was, had left Alliance to come to uh, okay. Pumwani. Then emergency, emergency broke out. So I was uh, uh, selected to be one of the people in this city who took care of children whose parents were either detained or killed uh, during the Mau Mau War. That, I think, was the most difficult time in my life. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I saw many, many children die mm -hmm. or hurt. I mm -hmm. also saw women die, uh, even being killed in, in, in our present. And, and it was a very difficult time for, for all Kenyan people. Mm. Mm. And it taught me quite a few lessons. In fact, I think it was at that time that I felt that something has to be done to save the African child and the woman. In fact, indeed, mm. in 1954, I tried to register an organization called Usalama Ya Wanawake na Watoto. So this be began very early. Yes, very early, but, okay. but it was very difficult in those days. I saw the chief native commissioner, uh, Mr. Atkins, mm -hmm. and he told me there's no way you can register such, such an organization. Because even my Ndeleo Yawanawake, where I was a member, was not answering some of these very big challenges mm -hmm. that, that I felt are going on in the lives of the African woman and her child. Uh, so when that application was turned down, I remained in my Leo Yawanawake and really fought. There was a time, for example, when I was arrested together with the girls mm. who were demonstrating in town from th through 
now we call it Jogo House. It was, uh, mm -hmm. it's not, it was the secretary in those days. Through uh, Mudurwa, Kaloleni, Makungeni, we were locked up mm -hmm. in the cells, and, and we got somebody to come and, uh, you know, really Get release us. Out. But then I think that really was the beginning. The white ladies now realized that they had to bring us closer to Mandeleo Yawanawake. So I became the first president of Mandeleo Yawanawake. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know we were presidents in those days. I'll tell you why we are no longer presidents. Uh, one president, <laughs> one president, um, Olkalau Liquor Licensing Board made some very terrible remarks. Mm. So President uh, Kenyatta, the following day, said he'll be the only president. Mm. All of us so became chairs else. then. <laughs> but but those were very treacherous times. Mm. I remember that after my election, you know, as a village girl, I would stretch my hands to greet those women members. The white would not, they would put their and hand behind them. They wouldn't shake my hand. Some of them would tell me, don't speak English here. That's the master's language. Okay. Of course, it was the master's language. Mm. So I would speak in good Swahili. Mm -hmm. Their Swahili was very broken, but they insisted that, that that's the, 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 the language How of they communication. Want to you. Yeah. Because, they, yes, I had to, to also record that I was. Yeah. not equal to them to the white women who are members of my mm. then i was introduced to the women in the uh, white islands and i'm telling you they they lived well mm. Mm -hmm. they lived well they, they were housewives of course no african woman can, can be a housewife because mm. you spend yeah. a little time in the house anyway <laughs> and um, you have to toil <laughs> for the family then <laughs> Then the Africans were really fighting to get independence, mm. and we, we were not there. And we asked the men, both Kadu and Kadu in those days, to bring us closer. But they thought they were able to just do everything so that by the time uh, independence comes, we will be uh, catered for. Mm. We didn't think this was right. So we, um, we sent a woman to Lancaster House where the, the talks about the independence of this yeah, country yeah, were being discussed. But then she came back. Priscilla Boa was a member of parliament in those days, nominated by the British. Uh, she told us that, that both men, the British and, and the Africans from here, they thought it, it, was a, it was nothing. It was, it was a big deal to even talk about women mm -hmm. in those days. But we wanted to know that when Kenya got independence, that we will be part of Catered that for. governance mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So when we did succeed, we made a point of going to see Mze Kenyatta in detention. We went to Lord where he was in those days. And, and we, when we saw him, and, and he, it was a serious meeting. Actually, we met the whole night. And uh, Mze assured us. Uh, it really, it, it's, it, 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 you know, you could see how concerned he was mm. about the situation of women back home. But then he told us, you know, you people, uh, you haven't been to school, which was true. Mm. Uh, they, he mentioned that there were men who had gone to South Africa. Uh, and attended to, the best of schools, mm. India, the best of and, education and, and yes, of that, that time. The best of schools, yeah. but there were no women, which was true. So he, were you ready for leadership? We were ready for leadership. Yes. And we asked ask another 50-50 representation. At that time? Yes, at we, that did, time. we did. So this conversation about affirmative action, it's not new. It's something that began way back, a conversation that has been you held see, over and over again. The women and men had gone through it all during the emergency. Mm -hmm. Women and men really suffered, and we did not see any reason why we would not be there in governance when both men and women really suffered mm. uh, during the, the Mau Mau War. And he, he, he was agreeable, he was agreeable. But I think, I think when he came out, perhaps we did not appreciate the patriarchy in, in our country in okay. those days. Yeah. So and that very strong. became a mm. challenge. Mm and a problem. But at least he did things that maybe we, people didn't see, like marriage system were a big problem in those days, the African type of marriage and Christian and so on. So he set up a commission for marriage and divorce. And also set up another commission for succession, which mm. was a big problem because mm. women lost it all. If a husband died, the women did. It's the brothers of, 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 the, of the husband mm. who, who, who took who, up the property. Yes, who mm. inherited everything. But it was difficult for women in those days. Kenyatta saw that, set up the truco. All right. But still, despite all that, and I know it's, it's the, the, the good thing about this is that your book, It Is Possible, mm. has tried to capture 
as much as yes. as possible about that journey. And uh, despite everything that you went through, you still ended up becoming among the pioneer members of parliament, the women of that time. You still went ahead to be elevated to the position of women Luo elders at that time. I know it was a bit tricky for that position to be taken up by a woman. You still ended up becoming a very passionate women rights activist. And a lot of things that you have achieved so far right now, you are a very strong women mentor for women leaders out there who want to be like Fib Mama Phoebe CEO, this program is for you. And of course, we will be back to tap into your political journey and also to talk mm. to professor for how the government has been able to to shape mm -hmm. up this journey and make it easier mm. for women of today if they hear how tough it was back then they will be surprised we are coming back right after this particular break to continue with this conversation and we will be joined by honorable eve obara the member of parliament for kasipul kabondo right after this particular break